Yeah. yeah. We'll work it out. Listen, yeah. make it work. I guarantee you. We we'll work it out. <laughs> Promise you. If I get All right. Sick, My cousin's <laughs> rigging this stuff right there. Cause it was supposed to be refrigerated. She had it out for a while, but it's it ain't like you had it in the heat. It's room oh temperature. God, it seems like the touch stay in your ear time I stay in your ear. <laughs> you got a problem with that? I'm trying to save lives. You know what? Next week, <laughs> next week I'm going to die. We gain 12 pounds. We over trying to. We going to Okay. Right, so, good. Don't don't misunderstand, okay? Okay. <laughs> what up, what up, y'all? It's your boy Choke, no joke, and I'm here with my man Q qualified. Yo, tell them where we at, man. Man, we in Atlanta. We at the Cobb Trade Show. The show been going on for many, many years. How you know, many years? Over 20 something, I think 30 years. Somewhere around there. Yeah, it's been going on a long time. You know, all of the best brands come here to present their, present their product to the stores all throughout the South. They come from every state out the South. You even got guys that come from the Midwest. You got guys that come from New York. So yeah, it's a big trade show. How many years have you been coming in? I've been in the business. This is my 26th year. I've probably been doing this show in the teens, 16, 17 years, somewhere around there. What, what yeah. was the first brand that you, like right now, what brand we you grab it? So right now, so now I own, a, I own an agency. So in the past I was doing my own, you know, one specific brand I was working for. So now my agency, we house multiple brands. So this brand here is, is Black Leaf, and there's also a new brand we're releasing called Ju Ren. And this is all black owned. It's a 100% black owned brand, which you don't see too many of that out here right now. All right. So when you first started, what was the first brand you started? Call Kanai, you already know, the OG, the godfather of this game, Carl Kanai, was the first one. He gave me my first job in the business. And what year was that? That was 96, I think. Yeah, about 96. I actually started modeling for him in 95. So I think, actually, I started working, doing sales in 97. Yeah, I was modeling for him, too. Yeah. You know, you know, <laughs> yeah. All right, shout out, Carl, what up? Carl Kanai is my guy, forever. Yeah, so, all right, so when, when Carl Kanai started and you had these trade shows. How many black brands was it then? There was none. <laughs> it was Carcanai. Now, there was probably, I think in the, at that time, it was probably Carcanai, Cross Colors, and then, you know, you started, uh, Maurice Malone was around during that time, and you started seeing other ones come in, of course, the Fugles of the World, the uh, Willie Esco's. Um, Mecca. Yeah, Mecca, Nietzsche, all of those. And then after that became an era of what back then we were calling urban brands, which was an era which came after all of those, which was your Sean Johns, your Fat Farms, your Rockaways, you know, Nietzsche, Academics, all of those guys were like the next realm. And that's really when the business just went way up there. And that's when you started seeing black reps, black owners. Yeah. And what, what year was that you would say where it like really took off? It was about 2000, it was early 2000s. When it went crazy, I would say 2003, four, five is when it just went bananas. Like you had to have those brands if you had a store at that time. Yeah, and then it, like, it got ridiculous because everybody had a brand. If you had a record label, you had a clothing line. Exactly, yeah, you just capitalized off of it. Yeah, it oversaturated, but it was good because it allowed you to make extra, extra streams of revenue. You know, now you're not just a record label owner, you're a clothing owner, you know what I'm saying? Like, it really helped, and it gave jobs to a lot of people, and a lot of these people that it gave jobs to, especially Carl, like, a lot of these guys that are presidents of companies, vice presidents, or, you know, higher up in management, they started working for Carl Kanai back then. That's where they really got their um, experience. Right. This is Carl Kanai, originator, giving shout outs to my man, Choke No Joke, Artie, living life forever. Like, you know, I've been going to these trade shows since Magic in 2000. Mm -hmm. 
And when they had like the big urban section and niggas is blasting music, they rapping and right, dancing. Right, right. That was <laughs> that, that was kind of like the circus part of it. <laughs> that that's really no more. But I wanted to make sure I know, it kind of brought a lot to the business though. So, you know, even though us guys who are in the booths selling and doing business, you know, really on some business shit, you know. It kind of took it kind of took away from it a little bit, but it also was good because it, it brought a lot of attention to brands. So you had people that in the past, the, the shows in Vegas, they would come and just strictly come for business. But then when the 2000s came, it was about parties and it was everybody was making money. So it just brought people like I had people from, you know, from the Bronx was like, I'm going to Vegas I said, for what? I'm going to party. I'm like, all right, I'm going to be there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not like that no right. more, buddy. It's not like that right now, for sure. Oh, Magic's made a, tr a tremendous change. I mean, you know, this whole urban section back here never existed before. You know what I mean? It's like when we used to come to Magic, you never heard no music and f feeling vibes and energy like this. It was like, you know, very corporate structured companies that were running the garment industry. But now that you know Clark and I was successful and opened up the doors for a lot of cats to come out there and do this thing Magic has a whole section dedicated towards urban and you go up front that section is dead so this is where all the action is anyway you know right, yeah right. I'm happy the way it is now I think it's a lot more lively a lot more exciting you know it's not just come in and and do some business and write some orders it has a lot more there's a lot more marketing and a lot more promotion being done which is important as well all right so like, like right now where we are, there's no presence of the old 2000 essence. You don't hear no music booming. It's, it's not no no rappers running through here promoting their CDs, trying to get a clothing deal, trying to get an endorsement deal. It, it's just... It's back to the business. It's back, yeah, straight to the business. Yeah. Uh, remember a vibe style? That was another... Um, uh, what do you call them? Yeah, trade shows. Trade, trade, trade shows. shows, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Um, some came and went. Uh, right now, probably uh, Project in Las Vegas, Agenda, you know, this one, the Cobb Show. Those are really, you know, the main shows, I would say, right now. There's a few others that's out there, but those are, for me, the two best shows are definitely this one in Atlanta and, and Vegas. Yeah. What happened to the whole urban phenomenon? You know, we really didn't like the word urban. You know what I mean? Because it kind of puts us in a box back then. Right. But that's what it was at that moment. But we, I don't even think we came up with that. You know what I'm saying? Because back well, then, yeah, you got to keep in mind, back then, we wasn't selling our own shit. Back then, it was, you know, it was the white guys that were selling our stuff, right? So they came up with the word urban. You know, we use, we kind of use streetwear, lifestyle. But urban is, we got rid of that. <laughs> Yeah. So what happened to the streetwear? I mean, it's it's here. You know, we we prefer to use lifestyle. Right. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, lifestyle well, products. You know, we had like dominant brands back then, like like Rockaway was doing 400 million one year. Yeah. You know, Fat Farm. Was you know what's crazy, man? Which a lot of people don't talk about, right? And me and you had this conversation privately. Is back then, you know, that was an era where drugs drove the business, right? So there was a lot of money in the streets at the time, and that drove the business. You know, you had guys that can come into a sport, store and spend three, four thousand dollars in a day. You get three or four of those guys in a day, you can basically pack up your store and go home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Those days is over. You know, crack was heavy, Hebron was heavy back then. You know, dumb days is over. You know, now it's average guys you know buying it's guys who got real jobs you know what i'm saying who's uh you know it could be a regular you know bus driver it could be a policeman or whatever it's, it's regular guys that's buying the product now you know they're being smarter with their money a few of y'all in the streets out here that be getting it but you know yeah but them days where there was multiple guys like that can really spend that money and then it was expendable money so they can spend that today on a Monday and then come back Thursday and spend the same thing again. Them days are over. A lot of those guys are dead in jail. And then, you know, just drugs is, <laughs> you know what I mean? Crack is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and then the government took over weed, so. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the government took over weed, so <laughs> that's a whole nother situation. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, and then they, you know, 
these artists today, they not really, don't seem like they into creating the fashion, they into buying it and yeah, you know, making Balenciaga and all these other things. Right, right. And they really are not supporting, you know, this this area anymore, you know? I right. think, um, yeah, they're, they're supporting the higher ends, those Balenciagas, and to be honest with you, you know, yeah, we all buy that stuff, but they don't really care. <laughs> I don't buy it, because I, I don't like it. Them ugly ass sneakers. They like looking like orthopedic shoes. And just because they got a, a, a high price tag don't make it fly to me, I'm sorry. You know, I'd rather go get me some stand We Really, if you think about it, we really control all of the money, you know, that goes into those brands. We control it. We're really the ones that's buying it, you know, so we really should have more ownership, you know, we should, and we should support each other. That's the problem. Our culture just doesn't support each other. You know what I mean? We don't, you know. That is a fact. Yeah, but this is, for sure, and this is the business side of it, right? So, like, a lot of times, you know, they just see, all right, you go to the store, you see product in the store, but there's a whole situation that goes on before the product gets to the store. You know, it, right. it starts from design, then it goes into production, and then it goes into sales, which is my era, you know, which is my area. So, yeah, there's a whole, you know, if, you, if you're trying to start your own clothing line, you got to know the business side of it. It's not just design and make money. You know, there's a whole business part. There's a whole level of it. You know, and a lot of times it's, you know, it's a hundred people might touch your, your line before it even hits the stores. Yeah. And that, that's on the small company. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, uh, tell them, give people uh, your information for your agency if they want to get their lines in stores and they need your help, tell yeah. them how to reach you. I mean, they can reach me, uh, they can hit me on Instagram. It's uh, at qualified113, Q-U-A-L-I-F-I-E-D-113. And if you got a brand, yeah, you know, my agency will take a look at it. We'll see, um, you know, what, what stores you want to be in and yeah, we'll have the conversation. You might want to give them your email too. Yeah, uh, my email is qualified113 at AOL. Yes, I still use the AOL. <laughs> that was the first email I ever had. I got other, right, I, I got other email addresses, but I ain't never leaving that one alone. The same thing with my phone number. It's been the same for 20 some years. <laughs> well, he got mail. Right, right, <laughs> While he go check his mailbox, I'm gonna be right back. <laughs> Chill, no joke. <laughs> Chill, no joke. You know what it is. Yo, y'all niggas with a stay DL. Down low. Stop flossing, man. What you, you, what you just. You just want them to just come and get you? Learn from my mistakes, man. That's what this is about. Learn from mistakes. Choke no joke. Let's go. You already know. Make a love, let's go. My aim was enlightened. Drop jewels on you. You thinking I'm jealous. I ain't got cheddar like you. I'm the dude to a game you got school. Was a local cat snatch you when I made moves?